Hey, what is up, everybody? Hunter Orell here, and today we are joined with Eth Frenchy, or Frenchy, as I like to call him, and everybody refers to him. Uh, he is a big player in the space. Everybody has bumped into him on one Twitter space or the other. Uh, he is the founder of Block Packs, uh, and they're looking to fractionalize the ownership of sports cards on the blockchain. Uh, and they're adding a great twist to it that adds gamification. Um, He's recently known, uh, and it was in the news and talked about quite a bit in our community, when he was proven to be certified mad when he went and purchased an $800,000 uh, 86 Fleer. Uh, it was a Jordan uh, card, and now he's fractionalizing it on the blockchain. Um, he'll reserve back 1%, and the other 99% will be up for grabs. Uh, and the only way that you can uh, fully own the card is either after 99 years, correct? Or if somebody yep. purchases it for, I think the number was 20,000 ETH, which is currently, what is that, like 45 million right now? Yep, yep, 40, 46 earlier. I haven't, I haven't looked lately, but yeah. So, I mean, just walk me through, one, where this idea came from. I know a lot of people think about like fractionizing physical, yep. um, but just your thought process on why, like why now, why this is the time, why sports cards. Yeah. So the, uh, you know, the block packs project, which we'll circle back to uh, and kind of go a little deeper is the idea behind it is to tokenize these collectibles and then uh, make them available as NFTs. You know, we've seen a lot of, plays from IP owners like Top Shot. Uh, we've seen the other uh, various card companies get into it, relatively closed off walled gardens. Nobody has really embraced decentralization. None of these products that we've seen come out, you, you can't go on OpenSea and buy them the way you do an ape. Um, so it's, it's, it's something that I thought really needed to change and needed to be done the right way. And specifically for me, I've been a collector for a long time. And one of the things that I hate is having to lug around bags of cash to a card show and try to feel like I'm, I'm doing that to have the best liquidity, bring my collection, which you know over the years, some of it got pretty expensive. And I feel like I need an armed security detail with me if I come to a card show. And it's just, there's a better way. And every time I operate in crypto, I feel like I'm seeing the future. And every time I operate in the physical realm with my cards, I feel like I'm stuck in the stone ages. Not, not only that, the liquidity across borders is just absolutely horrific. I, um, I grew, I, I, I had a really nice John uh, ja Morant, one of his absolute best rookie cards, and a guy in Australia wanted to buy it. It took me a month to consummate that transaction, a full month, because he had to find some people that knew me here in the states that he knew. He had to um, get comfortable with that before he would wire the money. Once he wired it, it sat in some type of uh, international money laundering hold for like a week i finally so pain, it. it was a painful experience is what yeah, you're it saying was awful. it was awful and so i'm like if this if this card was held in a vault and there was an nft that just simply represented the ownership he who owns the nft owns the card Correct. and can choose to have that card shipped to them this would be done in two seconds in a trustless way and so that's what i wanted to, that's what i set out and wanted to build I knew very well that if we just built that and I was the first one sticking my cards on the blockchain, it would just, it would go nowhere and it would right. be really hard to get other people to adopt it. So we had to come up with some unique twists in how to get there. And so what we did is we came up with the idea that people who are in the hobby and even those of us that are in NFTs, I mean, we all love the mystery of seeing our NFTs reveal. I mean, I remember when sitting for a week waiting for my kennel club uh, dogs to open you know, that was, I was like, I want to see this doggone thing. I was it, it was, that was an and exciting I'm, week. Like you're sitting there, yeah. anticipation growing, like even, even ripping a pack on top shot is, is an exciting thing because it's, you know, it, the dopamine hit is, is huge. Yep. Um, and it's, it is sure. exciting. <clears throat> For sure. And, and so creating that experience where you can rip digital packs, have true randomization on the blockchain. And I can talk about that when we get a little deeper because the, the, the things we've done technologically to avoid gas and be able to do this. Um, so, and what we've done is we've taken a set list of cards that are in our vault and we have tokenized each one of them into 2048, what we call RAS tokens. So the first drop has 50 physical cards in it. There are 2,048 RAS tokens for each one. You can do that math. It's over 100,000 tokens. Each one, an individual NFT that goes in a pack and gets randomized. If you buy the packs, five bucks a piece, you open them and you get 
a RAS token for one of those cards. What that RAS token is, it's a sweepstakes entry. It's a sweepstakes entry for a one in 2048 chance to win that underlying card. That in of itself is pretty cool. But what we've done is now you get one week to trade those tokens back and forth, however you want, buy what you want, sell what you don't want. After one week, we eliminate half of the tokens. So we deflate it. It's now essentially token- a Thanos snap, like, you know, 50% right. live, 50% <laughs> die. Yes. I, I, yes. I was reading through that and I was like, he's, he's missing a great reference in here to the Thanos snap. Um, that is a good idea. Yeah, that is a good one. I'll, I will use that now. So I'll, I'll, I'll credit you. I'll credit you the first time. I appreciate I it. it but I, I appreciate don't know if I it. Credit every time. But yeah, so, <laughs> so you get the Thanos snap. Fifty percent are eliminated, and the theoretical value of every token you hold just doubles. So in this drop, one of the cards is a Patrick Mahomes card. We just saw a big four point three million dollar sale this morning. This is one of his upper tier cards. I would have said it was probably worth about 50 grand a week ago. Today, it's probably worth more like 75 because these things really move the market quickly when you get these big watershed type sales. Right. Um, so that particular card, if you get a one in 2048 RAS token for it out of your $5 pack, it has an immediate value somewhere in that 25 to $40 range, depending on how we value the underlying card. Just take the price of the card and divide it by the 2048. Um, One, I don't think many of them will actually sell for that because I think uh, FOMO will kick in because if you sell that token, you're going to know its provenance, where it goes. And if it ultimately wins the card, you're going to be, I'd go play in traffic if I did that because I'm I'm a gambler and I just, I would uh, (laughs) would kill me. But um, so so it's going to create a really interesting pricing dynamic. What will it take to pry these things away from people? How much above, say, true value Will someone have to pay to pry it away? Only the free market can tell us that. But then once that Thanos snap happens, if your token survives, it theoretically just doubled. So now it's it's it goes from let's just call it 50 bucks. It goes to 100 bucks. And then you can probably guess where this is headed. Um, Another Thanos snap is coming and it eliminates again down 50 percent each round, cutting it 50 percent. Again, fully these tokens, they'll be on, you'll be able to sell them on OpenSea. You'll be able to sell them on our site. These are legit ERC 721 NFTs. Um, you can sell them. They're yours. There's nothing I can do to stop you. Right. And at each step of the way, the, the value will increase. Now, when we get so to there the is round- a potential, there is a potential here where if I have, let's just say we're use like theoretical numbers, like I have it listed for one ETH or whatever. The snap happens. Technically, if that value was just, you know, just below it, like 0.75. Now that that actual value was doubled to 1.5, mm-hmm. a buyer would say, okay, the value was doubled. It's still for sale. It didn't get eliminated. Immediately buy that at one and be able to relist it higher. So there, there's this they like, could. They could. it's this like laddering yeah. tier value up every time. Yeah. So, so, and some people may just try to do that. They may just list them a little bit under market for the next round and let mm-hmm. the market sell it when it moves up. That could be a, a tactic people could do. Right. Um, there's, there's a lot of different ways I think guys could, could play it. But that certainly you could do that. And then when it gets to the round of 64, we are going to come in as the promotion administrator and we're going to provide a floor value for all the tokens, meaning we're, we're willing to buy them back. Um, and so what that does is that just guarantees that the market has a good floor of liquidity under it. And we're going to be those offers are going to be decent because I know what the cards are worth. Um, if we price that right and people do choose to take those shark offers what happens is if you take a shark offer your token stays alive but if it goes on and wins you've agreed that that's the sale price you're done you're, you're going to get that amount of ETH, but you're you're not going to get the card if you win we would then bring the card back in it would simply just immediately go for listing in our marketplace and we would just sell the card so since we know what it's worth um we can we can make those type of, of offers i suspect that we will have people coming over the top of us because that market is going to, if the card is worth 50,000 right. and let's, and, and let's say I'm offering based on a value of, of 35 or 40,000, right. someone else is going to say, I really want that card. If I'll come over top of them, cause I want the token. But you were setting that like floor for liquidity. Like you're, you're improving the market dynamics potentially by, by adding yeah. that offer. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. I, I haven't heard anybody say that. It's, it's a very uh, interesting play. Yeah. Um, so, so at the end, you know, you're left with, at the end, you get down to one person and, and at the, at the, at the, the fight. And so what happens is the way I've timed this, this will drop on a Sunday. You'll get a one week trade with no halvings of the tokens. And then the Thanos snaps start on the following, uh, Saturday. And the first, the first five happen really quickly. 
like an hour apart. So you got to move if you, and it's going to be a really fast paced Saturday afternoon for people. Oh, wow. And okay. Then, I thought it was each one was a week apart. So no, 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 no. This moves and then quick. it starts going this is all over. It's all over completely in eight days. So okay. once that, once it happens on Saturday, then we move into those, what we call the shark rounds, the rounds from 64 on down. We move through those Saturday, Sunday, and early on or Monday morning, midday, Monday. And then by Monday night, we'll do the round of eight at 7 p.m., the round of four at 10 p.m., and the final at, um, I just screwed that up. It would be 7 p.m., 9 p.m., and 11 p.m., I think is what we okay. yeah, But it's, it's, it's all during, I envision people sitting around maybe watching Monday Night Football jumping in and out of these things um I, I think some people you know a good play could be if, if you have an idea of what the card's worth you really want it you could try to buy all four of the final four out for undervalue if the this cards were 50 yeah. final four you buy them each out at ten thousand. you just acquired that card for forty thousand dollars so that could right. be a play and everybody's happy the guys that are the guys that are that were sitting on those tokens are happy to rake 10 grand and, and you, you have the card you want so a lot of really cool things can happen at the end there um and it'll be really interesting to see how that plays out. And so that was going amazingly well. And I, I wanted to, one of the things in our, in our discord, I'm really trying to make sure that we absolutely put the community first. I look at these other NFT projects and the ones that have genuine true communities, they're the ones that, that, that are winning. Um, and I don't mean that in the sense of a community that wants to pump, pump and dump, right? I mean, I mean a true community that believes in the project, that loves what they're doing. And so that's where we came up with this thing that kind of hit the news, the whole Michael Jordan thing. So that card, walk me, walk me had, through like the moment you had the idea. So the buying and like what it was like afterwards and what was yep. the response to it? So originally I was planning to, I knew when we launched the vault contract that would hold the 100% ownership of the card, I knew 100% that the card that had to be the Genesis token had to be a Michael Jordan PSA 10 86 Fleer. I looked at and, probably- And, and for the viewers and the listeners that don't know why, explain why that card, because it is significant. It's, it's, yeah, so it's, it's the most iconic sports card of the modern era. Um, there's some other cards, the Honus Wagners, the Mickey Mantles that kind of go way back. But of the modern era, that 86 Fleer, it is, it, it's the most iconic uh, card of the most iconic global athlete. I mean, Jordan, Jordan changed everything. I mean, we, we can even, there may be a few people you could debate about the greatness across sports. I mean, you could compare him to Tom Brady, but Tom Brady is as much as I love him. He, he's not Jordan. He's not what Jordan is in a, in a global, uh, the relevance that he has. I mean, it, it is a, there's only 300 copies of that card in the PSA 10 grade in existence. And um, they're, they're very highly sought after. I mean, if you listen to people like Gary V, I mean, Gary's got a number of them. Um, and there's, there's, it's, it's just, it's just the iconic card to have. So I knew the Genesis token had to be the Jordan. And I looked at about 50 copies of Jordans before I actually acquired my own. Um, I didn't just to make sure we're straight. The, the one that sold for 800,000, that's not the card I bought. I bought my card um, a, a while back. This was okay. my personal card. And I was going to put my personal card as the Genesis token. And, and I was going to be like, oh, cool. I, I, I minted the Genesis token. It's mine. And then I realized, I was like, you know, this moment is bigger than that. Because this is a watershed moment for being able to bring physical collectibles to the blockchain in a way that fully decentralizes them with one caveat. We hold them in a vault because we have to. So that is the one piece of centralization that we have to live with. These are, it's a bonded conservatorship. Um, if something happens to the card, it's fully insured. There is some centralization there because it's a physical asset. You can't have the token where some random guy owns both the token and the card because he sells the token and doesn't ship the card. It needs to be ripe for fraud. So that's the only piece of centralization. Outside of that, this is the first time that someone has brought this this type of collectible to a true ER721 ownership that is global anywhere in the free world. If you have that token, you can have that card shipped to you. Now, I in realizing that this moment was bigger, that we were going to do something that could potentially be really, really special, I said, I cannot just do this and hog it for myself. This has to be something that I give to the community. So I made the announcement that everyone who bought at least 30 packs in our drop would get a piece 
of that Michael Jordan card via what we're calling a Frax token. And so the Frax token is an NFT. It represents a specific share amount of the card. Um, the one that I'm, I'm keeping 1% for myself, the 1% I'm keeping is what's called the red tier, the ruby, I call it ruby tier. So those are, there's 23 of them, matches his jersey number, and they're 1% of the card each. And I'm keeping one of those. The other 22 are going out to the community. Under that, there's a gold one. There's 199 goals. It represents 0.1% of the card. Um, the gold ones are um, going to people who purchased at least 200 packs, silver, gotcha. 100 packs, and bronze, uh, 30 packs. And the bronze is 0.01%. Silver is 0.03%. So if you do the math off the most recent sale of this card, which I absolutely believe ours rivals the one that just sold, um, the uh, if you just do the math on a 1% share, that would be worth $8,000. You own 1% of the card, it's worth $8,000. But here's the thing. This is so much bigger than that, that I think this enters into a realm that that really kind of disconnects it from that that physical because here's where that here's what we what we did that's so special about this card we took the card and we were locking the vault token we're locking that vault token into a smart contract and the only way to remove it is for someone to pay twenty thousand each or 99 years pass and the card auctions to the highest bidder. So for my lifetime, if nobody pays the forty, the the the, the twenty thousand ETH, that card's gone. I can, I'll, it's, it'll it'll never it'll it's, stay locked. But that's the thing; like nobody's going to pay the twenty thousand ETH, right? Nobody's gonna nobody's gonna pay the twenty thousand ETH today. But I'll just I will just say this, and I, I'm not looking to pump this. That and I, I there's nothing I can do to control this. Like it's locked. If the card is in our booth here at the National Card Show, you can come by and take a picture with it. If somebody walks up to that booth with $40 million cash in a bag, I literally can't sell them the car. It, it, I, would, I would be violating my what I've agreed to. And you, every, every member of the Black Pass community should sue me for fraud. It's, it's, it can't be bought that way. $40 million today can't buy that card. Only 20,000 ETH on the blockchain right. offered into the smart contract can do it. But I'll say this. I was listening to Beeple and Beeple said that he never sold a piece of art above like a thousand dollars until things popped off for him in the NFT space based in the everyday go for 69 million. Right. I, I'm, I mean, he put an amazing amount of work in that and that's, and, and he was absolutely rewarded for it and deserves every penny of it. But if someone ascribes that much value to his artwork in the everydays, why would someone never ascribe that much value to the absolute first ever tokenized collectible? If we can set a new standard, um, if this if this sets a standard again, if it's and, or I see what you're or, saying, you're saying above the like the base value of the card, adding it being the initial could potentially increase or multiply its value. Yeah, I'll just tell you this in the Discord right now. I have no control over what po folks do. The, the bronze share on paper, if you just take it to that $800,000 value, should be worth 80 bucks. Um, I think you would have, it would be like pulling teeth to get your hands on one of those for under $200. Really? I mean, if the floor of those is under $200, I'll mop it myself probably. Because I, I just feel like the, the, the 23s, the 1% shares, I would be floored if somebody lets one of those go for less than $20,000. And if you, if wow. you just back that out, that, 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 that immediately puts $2 million valuation on the card right out the gate. And I think that there are going to be a lot of people who are going to want to collect these. Like I, I, today, I've had my eye on one of the nicest Kobe Bryant rookie cards. I've had my eye on it for six, six plus months. And um, I bought it this morning. It's in our case. You bought it this morning. Oh, wow. And it's going, and it's going to be the eight. Token number eight on our block which Kobe wore number eight, token number eight will be that card exactly the same way we did this Jordan. And I will give it away the same way to people who buy our next drop. So it's, you know, it's giving it to the community, turning it loose. I mean, obviously you've got smart listeners. I'm, I'm not, I'm, I mean, I, I have a plan here. My plan is, is that we do have um, we do have an, a royalty in in the smart contract, and so well, it's I'm like three point nine percent, right? It's three point nine on the vault. It's five on frax. So any five vault card is five. Any vault card is um, is three point nine, and any frax is five. And and that's what what I'm basically going to have to live off of on that card. I mean, I'm 
I took an $800,000 card and if it doesn't have trading velocity where over the next few years, I, I feel like it's about a three year payback window, honestly, that's my gut. Um, so I think it'll take me three years to kind of get level set back to today. And then, and then I think it'll, you know, there's, there's a market for that going forward. And I think a lot of people can have a lot so, of great success. So those initial, those sales that you're, you're generating don't, aren't actually paying the card back your initial mm -hmm. investment. No, no, nobody's giving me a dime on that card. The cards that are in the packs that, that, that the packs are paying for, those are 50 different cards. You know, that's a Ja Morant, one of one rookie card. That's a Patrick Mahomes. I've got a top, I've got a tops Chrome LeBron. Right. And the people that ultimately end up with those, those aren't fractionals. Those are 100% ownership. You own Owner, it. Uh, okay. Um, and so if you get to that card, that's the one that trades at 3.9%. You can trade it anywhere in the free world. And if, you, if anybody wants to hold it and touch it, all they have to do is fill out a form and we don't even charge shipping. There's no bullshit fees in there that I'm trying to <laughs> get over on people. This guy's I'm, done I'm with not, eBay. You can tell this guy is done with eBay. Oh, I am so done with eBay. So done. With eBay. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, and, it, and it's, uh, it's just, you know, I, th I think it's, I think it's going to be something that it's by putting these cards on there that come through our, our model, um, people will ultimately win those cards. I, I hope that they'll listen to the story that we're telling and believe. And I hope I, I'd love to see half the cards stay tokenized from the first drop. There's 50 cards. They're all really, really good cards, really big cards. There's a, there's, um, there's, hey, a you're, not you're not, you're not putting crap out. You're, mm -mm, you know, you're no, trying a, to provide quality and value. It's yep. just, I, I keep yep. reading and getting that feeling from you. It's, uh, yep. It's a long-term thing. Just, and it's not just sports cards. Um, we have a nice, we have a one of one of a kind uh, square cut Pikachu gem grade in there. I'm, I'm looking for a first edition Charizard. I'm looking for a Black Lotus for Magic, uh, Magic the Gathering. It's it's all trading cards at first, and then we'll move into other bigger collectibles, comics, that sort of thing. I've made some really good connections in the comic space, and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna tackle it all. I mean, the whole goal here right. is if it's a vaultable, relatively easily shipped. Um, collectible that 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 we can vault and tokenize. We're, we 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 want to play in that space, and I'm 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 I think it'll be I think people will when they understand it when these guys see what the future looks like instead of the Stone Ages. I think they're going to love it, and I think that'll keep the cards tokenized. And then and then as we do more pack releases, maybe within a year we put the cards in a pack, and maybe 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 ninety percent of them stay on the on the on the blockchain. Right. And the other thing so, that's going to be cool. I'm going to be one quick point then. I'm going to yeah. drop, some, I'm going to start dropping some tokens where people can mint their own collectibles. So like if you have a card and you want to be the first to mint a Blastoise from Pokemon, you hit a mint token in one of my packs, you can ship us that Blastoise, we'll, we'll vault it for you, we'll issue the vault token, drop it over to you, and now you have your own Blastoise, you were the first one to put one on the, on the blockchain. So that's going to be, I think, really cool. I've I got some cards sitting right behind me. We should talk then. <laughs> yeah, so it's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be great, man. So I'm, I'm, I'm super excited about, and people are really loving that, that Jordan, that's a gift to the community. It's a big bet. I mean, I'm my, my, my family, you know, I've been an entrepreneur for, for tell me, for just tell me, years. I know you've been collecting forever. Maybe tell us like your history, because you seem like a sure. really dope dude who I would love to grab a beer with and just like BS yeah. for five hours. You, you seem like yes. just such a genuine collector you've i love it just tell me about the story thanks man yeah so i've i've been around for a long time um i was an accountant by trade and then i graduated college in 1997 um and so early in college we were basically just getting a, a visual browser and as i got out i was uh, it went into consulting and i was on a team that took a, a company called lending tree public and I got to see some of the, and I was, and I was a light staff and I was a peon, like basically pushing some paper, but I saw enough of the business model to understand what they were doing. And I was like, man, they're using the internet in a really unique way to generate these leads. And I kind of figured out that, Hey, there's all these dot com stores that are popping up, but unless you are on their website at the time, you don't know if they're having sales and promotions. So I basically took the old legacy Sunday sales flyers and, and turned those into email databases and was kind of the first to, to build that out. Um, built that business out, was had um, really great success with that. Um, and then in 2008, I uh, exited that business and then moved over to work on Web 2.0, which was basically Facebook's open platform at the time. Right. And I filed a patent on lookalike digital ad targeting. 
and got that approved a few years later. Today, I have a really nice agency that services a lot of Fortune 500 clients. At one point, we actually licensed that to all of the big five agencies that control 80% of the global ad spending. But we ultimately deprecated that licensing and decided to make it a, um, a, a service business with the platform stack behind it. And that's what we do today for that, for that business. And the whole time I was always collecting and always doing that. And then when I began to dig in, understand crypto, understand NFTs, I truly believe this is the third, this is the third pillar for my, my career. And I think this one's going to be bigger than them all. I think this is bigger. Are you going, you're, it feels like you're going all in. I, I have. On I, Web 3.0. So, I, I funded all of this myself. Everything here. And I was um, going to be my next I, question I, I is, few, is this just I you? Do you have partners. investors? I, I have a couple of business partners and we, 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 we self-funded everything. Um, and, you know, I mean, I've, I've, I've been fortunate in my, um, in, my, in my past deals. I haven't raised money. Actually, I did, a, I did an angel round in 99. It's the last time I raised money. So everything else I've done has been self-funded. I understand how you have to build a business to make profits. I mean, my phone, not to sound dickish, but my phone is, and emails are blowing up right now with VCs and, and private equity. And honestly, I'm just, I don't mean, I don't mean any harm, but I'm just not returning their calls. <laughs> I'm not, I have nothing, to, we don't have nothing to talk about. We were, um, we're going to take this business and we're going to scale it. And I feel like this is my, this is going to be my crown jewel. And that Jordan is the first real step in that tokenizing that Jordan. I believe it's the biggest thing I've ever done in my career. It's great. It's certainly the biggest ball grab I've ever had to take $800,000 <laughs> and lock it in a 99 year smart contract. I mean, what does your family think? They think I'm insane. They think I'm insane. <laughs> so um, my, 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 my kids were like, that was going to be our car. We were going to inherit that. And I'm like, well, not anymore. It's gone. You can hear it. See, it's the internet. Yeah. So it's, um, it's, it's been, it's, 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 it's exhilarating to do it, to feel like I'm, I'm breaking some ground on something like this, but there, and, and I really, I don't have any fear in it. Um, in the, in losing the, I, I don't, I just, I have so much conviction that I'm right about this model um, that I think the only thing it's going to take is time um, is, is I just have to, when people hear about this, they love it from top to bottom. They love it. The only people that don't love it are they're in the card community. I mean, I'll just say it. They, they're, they're just older guys and they think that the, the, the funny, the shadowy super coders of the, of the, did you hear that this morning I, when uh, the shadow, shadowy super coders, what a, gr yeah. what a great description. I tried to, I tried to go buy that domain. Somebody else beat me to it. I was oh. like, God, I, I was like, I want to be a, I want to, I, I almost changed my Twitter profile to be a shadowy super coder. But anyway, <laughs> that, that those are the type of people that have um, kind of just not been into it. But when, when, when younger people that get it come up, they are just, I mean, they're, they're so excited about this and they, I mean, they so you're at, the you're at the national convention in Chicago right now. What is, yeah, right I mean, now, you're, you're, my, you're at the troops on the ground. Yeah, what is, here. do you hear NFTs or people talking about it or, or is it just business as usual? And you're that lone wolf just sitting there like, I'm no, about to eat this up. It, right now there is a big age divide. If you walk that floor um, and you look at someone and they are, they're, 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 if they're in their twenties, they're all over it. They're, they're, you know, they're, they've been exposed to top shot. I was talking to um, somebody from my discord AD earlier. He came by the booth, younger guy, super pumped. And he, and, and when he fully under, like he, he had actually kind of missed the point that these are true ERC 721s because a lot of people hear that it's a, it's a, it's an NFT project and their mind immediately goes to wax. Their mind immediately goes to top shot. Um, and, and look, those, Top shot, we, we all owe them a debt. The the Dapper Lab team, this, I mean, that, what they've done is amazing. And I get why they've done things the way they have. I understand it. I understand that they, that they're, you know, the, a lot of the reasons for it, but at the same time, it's not ER721. It's, it's not ERC721. It's not what we want. It's not, an, it's not the way the apes are done. It's not the way you know, crypto punks aren't truly tough to wrap, but still it's, it's, we, um, that's what we want. We all want, we all want the true decentralization and yep. that's what the ERC 721 gets. And when people realize that he was, he had like this, he was like, Oh my God, I did not buy enough packs. He's like, I, I, I gotta go talk to my dad. We're going to find somebody that'll sell us some. He was like freaking out when he, cause he, he missed that point. He thought we were going to be working in our own ecosystem and he loved it. And when he found out that it was true ERC 721, he was like, Oh my God, 
I, I didn't buy enough packs. So right. um, I think it's going to be um, super cool. There are, we do have some, we held back some packs. This is legally a sweepstakes. Um, so yeah, I was about to ask the legality of this is a security yeah. so sweepstakes. There's, there's some, you know, yeah. where, so where does this land? So look, yeah, I can, I can hit them both. I'll, I'll start with the sweepstakes side. Um, it's a bonded sweepstakes. It's legal in all 50. It's, um, we, we have a mail in, you can mail in and get a from Washington, right? Isn't it Washington? That's the one that has that mail in. Uh, no, it's actually, that's actually a U that's actually, um, that that's actually a FTC level thing. I, I'm pretty ah, sure, okay. but I, I may be wrong on that, but I know we have to provide it. And so we have a mail in option. You can mail in and you have the exact same odds. Um, we don't hide it and it's right on the website, but if you do the mail in, you don't get a piece of the Jordan. Like the Jordan gotcha. is a paid gift. That's not a, that's not a prize. You, you, so, and, and also there's other functionality you don't get. So I'm, I'm fine. If somebody wants to mail in and just get a token and let it rip and be on their own and do their own thing. Okay, fine. Do that. I, I don't, I would, I believe the benefits that we're providing for the paid side on purchase is, is great. And our ultimate business model is to get people on the, on the blockchain. Now, once I issue those as NFTs, this is, this is the big thing. If you play the, the, a game where you where you go in McDonald's and pull um, the the Monopoly thing, you pull Park Place off of your French fries. That's yours. Right. You own it. You can walk out on the street and sell it. You can burn right. it. You can do whatever you want with it. Before NFTs, a sweepstakes entry online was an entry in somebody's database. There was no proof of ownership, no provenance. Now, when I issue that entry as a as an NFT. You can do what the heck you want with it the same way if you can, if you peel those fries or if you open a, a bottle right. cap, if someone runs a promotion where if you scratch right. off four sevens, you get a million dollars, you scratch off two, it's now worth more, you can go sell it. So that's what it is. We don't take any commission on RAS tokens. Um, and that's- I, I, And that's, I love this. Like the, the more you talk, the more I'm like, he gets it. He's thinking the right tone. I mean, I just pitched and here's free alpha to anybody who's listening or watching is I just pitched how- consumer packaged goods are going to be revolutionized over the next three years here where, you know, you can have these, you know, prizes and gamification for Doritos or for Snapple um, or, you know, Red Bull and Coke, where, you know, you get a, a prize or token that's redeemable. You can sell it. You can trade it. You have to pair them to get like a grand prize. You can sell and trade them. And now there's gamification. And it's not only good for, you know, the NFT community and the digital community, but, um, every CPG right now should be like, this is not a cash grab for we can generate revenue through the, these royalties and secondary sales. And, you know, maybe we'll sell some stuff as NFTs, but it drives people back to trying the product or interacting with the actual retail product more, which is just, yeah. it's, it's going to be a huge game changer. And the, the late movers are really going to get, uh, yeah. take a hit, I think. Yeah, and I, I we didn't want to have a, a, a mechanism where there was any forced accretion into the RAS token model. We wanted to let because it's short lived. That's not the end game. That's fun for the community, but the end game is to get to the vault tokens, and um, and that's where we'll make our living. We'll make our living on vault tokens and, and providing that liquidity, and we'll, and we'll make our living on the hopefully on the really nice high high end fractional uh, cards. Now to go to your second point um, on the fractionalization because a lot of people are struggling with this. If you look at Masterworks SEC registered, you look at Collectible. SEC registered, um, they take their they they take their assets in, they file them, they issue them as shares, they use broker dealers, they do they do all of that. So the difference here is that ours fails the Howey test, which is the securitization test, whether it's something is a security or not, because nobody can influence it once it's issued. There's an expectation of profit. People are paying me money. They're buying packs. They're not buying the Jordan specifically, but, and that's another thing I didn't, most people bought all those packs. They didn't know that Jordan was coming. Like, so, gotcha. we, but, but even if they did, it, it's, it's still, there are still some packs left. So some people will buy, there is an expectation of profit. So there that's there. Um, but when you get to, I forget what the second test is, um, but whatever, but when you get to the third test, the third test is, is that but, it's but that first on test, how, when you say it can't be influenced, what explain that a little so bit more for that me. That was, no, that's, that was the third test. So the, th so in the Howey test for a securitization, which is established case law, uh, I'm not a lawyer. I'll put that out there. Don't okay. anybody take this as legal advice. I'm, I'm just regurgitating the legal advice that I've spent a lot of money on. Understand. Um, <laughs> the, 
the Howey test has the, basically, if you meet these things, you are a security and therefore you have to follow all these security laws. And one of them on fractionalization is um, there's an expectation of profit. And in, or and basically that means, a, my lawyers told me it's a hope of profit. Because I was like, no, this is a sweepstakes. How can you have an expectation if you're playing a sweepstakes? So you don't really expect to win. And they were like, well, no, you got to think of it. A court may look at it and say a hope. More, and I was like, oh, okay, well, like, sure, everybody has a hope, right? right. Um, <laughs> but the last, the last prong of that, which is the, the big one, it has to rely on someone else's action. So if you look at the XRP case, again, I'm not a lawyer, but if you look at the XRP case, they made a lot of promises to people on what they were going to do to increase the value of the, right. um, the token. And that's, why the, that's how the, why the SEC is going after them. Where that'll all settle out, God only knows. But with us, we locked it in a smart contract. There are no decisions to make. We have a waterfall. We have a, we, we have a secession plan if block packs fails for transferring fiduciary responsibility for the card and the ownership um, and in using the, uh, the, the, the royalty to cover that expense. It's the only thing that has to happen is the, is the blockchain just runs. And, and that's not a person. We're not dependent on anything. The rules are set. If someone walks over to my booth and offers me $20 million right now for that card, I can't text everybody and say, hey, guys, y'all want to sell? We just got an amazing offer. We right. all may want to take that and run. That'd be, a, that'd be the highest sports card ever but sold. But you can't. We can't. So there's nothing I can do to control it. And not only that, there is a really, really valid case that the way that card could be worth the most money is if I go out of business. Just think about the Explain story. that. I, that does that does make sense to okay, me. Okay, so it is that smart contract is the first one ever. It's the right. first one ever that did that did this. This is the Genesis token. It's the first one. Stories in collectibles matter. What is? How does the story play out? Like that uh, stories are hundred percent. Yeah, and so if if it's like if if in five years you think about what what got crypto punks to where they are, like it's it it just they had to have this moment that took them to the next level. Um, and if who's to say that our triggering moment might not be, man, something happened and, and block packs went belly up, but that token is still there. And this proves that the blockchain doesn't die. So I, pr it proves it. Because so you're like, in okay, in worst case, we got a business could be good news or not really, but like <laughs> terrible news for me. But so right. my point is, is like, if a regulator looks at me and says, Jeff, you can do something to control that card. I'm like, what? What can I do? It's locked. It's two ways out. Either 99 years at auctions, or it's um, it's 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 somebody offers. But what about if you went out and started buying all the other cards that are out there, and you know, listing them for much much higher? And now, you know, you you've influenced yeah, the market so in that, that way. That would so so that that triangulation wouldn't wouldn't pass the Howey test. It's not directly gotcha. tied to that thing. Like if if I go out and anybody can do those things, right? Anybody could try to inflate the card market and pump something up and make it worth more. That, that, that fails the Howie. That's not something that would pass the Howie test. The Howie test would be more like, um, I saw a company that got popped because they, um, they issued a token. They were a logistics company. And basically if you bought the token, you were able to use their system and they were giving you like some little amount of um, of a rebate into your token if you uh, if you hold the token. Well, that rebate was 100% based on them being successful and and continuing to sell and market their business and sell and market their token. I see a lot of crypto projects where, based on what the lawyers have told me, um, people are violating the Howey test pretty aggressively. Some of these ones where. Um, where token holders are given any type of piece of the of the royalty or um, there's just these guaranteed things that rely on that business to do if 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 regulators get really serious there are a lot of violations walking around and i, right. and I feel I, like I, I've, I think like fractional is one that i've like analyzed like is that a security and a lot of these mm -hmm. other fractional um you know services and I mean, do you think the SEC is going to come hard down hard at some point? I mean, they have to, right? With these people I mean, that are I don't, violating, I don't know and not to say the, that any of the ones I mentioned are, but yeah, um, yeah. So I, you know, it's I don't know how how some of this stuff, where they're going to draw the lines in the modern era. I feel really good with where we are because we've completely un like I again I can't do anything, and and there's 
There's nothing I can do to change the trajectory of that card that anyone else in the world can't do that, like you said, that would be more of a macro hobby type thing or whatever. Um, and, and another thing is it would be the issuer having that that Im that impact specifically. So there's there's I feel really good about our position. I think there are a lot of play, a lot of projects that if if it were my project, I would probably be a little uneasy that yeah, they might come and really want to want to start regulating the space. But now the next thing is, are they going to really come and worry about some of these NFT projects when you look at what some of the currencies are doing? I feel like that's where right now the biggest landmine is. Yeah. Um, and um, but it's because there's some of the stuff is it's it's pretty it, it is pretty egregious. And then some of them are based in the U.S. And they're, they're just I don't like all of the rules but they're the rules and we have to play by them. And, um, and we've, I've spent a lot of money on, on really good that I believe are really good lawyers to help me navigate that because I knew where I wanted to go. Um, and, um, and, you know, again, the, the, the biggest thing for this is that removing that control element it on, and, and, and again, if you look at the way we did it, there's, it's, it's a really pro consumer thing that we've done too. Like, the fact that most of our packs were all sold and then out of the, out of the blue, it's like, Oh, by the way, and you're going to get a piece of this Jordans. I mean, it's a great community reward. It is. Um, so the expectation of profit for those people on that wasn't there when 80% of them bought because they didn't even know we were going to do it. Right. And you're um, fully, and, are you sold out on like, where do you stand on sales right now? So right now we are sold out. So what we did is we allowed people to buy with fiat because we knew we had to onboard a lot of people from the hobby that would be interested in the card. So we took credit cards for the presale. Um, when we, 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 we will be moving to crypto only and that's where okay. we're headed. And so how did you do that thing, fiat? How was the portal for that transaction done? It was basically just, yeah, you just show up on the website and click buy and it's a, it was a Stripe integration that got your credit card and gotcha. you know, we incremented the number of packs, just straight up shopping cart. But when we do the, um, and, and I do, I do want to circle back and talk about the randomization and why this stuff is fair because that stuff's super cool too. But the, um, but we, we've held back some for the legal compliance because I had to have tokens to do the mail-ins with gotcha. and we held back and we held back a little bit because I wanted to let crypto people be able to buy. And so on release, we have a, I, I want to say it's somewhere around six to 7,000 packs um, by the time we, depending on where the mail-ins end up. Um, and those will be available to people that want to come and pay with ETH. So your listeners, you're in the catbird seat because a lot of the folks that have not paid attention, they're in a the card space, they can't, they won't be able to get them. So right. if you don't show up with a MetaMask wallet with ETH, you're not going to be able to. So the, uh, the folks that are in the NFT space, there is still a way to get in on drop day. And, um, we're actually looking to drop the Jordan tokens. We're going to do a surprise drop on those. Um, it's going to be before the packs drop on August 7th for ripping. Um, but I won't say exactly what day it is next week, partly because I don't know, but, um, <laughs> but it, it's, it's, it should be one day next week. We're going to just surprise drop them. And then nobody has to rush because the people that have them, they're, they're locked, you know, they, we're going to match up their account and they're going to get it. So we're just going to do a slow rollout across our customer base. So we don't have gas go through the roof and right. the, um, and, but then the people that come in by late, they'll still get those Jordan Frax tokens too. Um, so if it, there's enough of those that it should, so some of the tiers may run out, but pretty much everybody that buys or in, it goes over 30 packs, they're gonna, they're gonna get a, a piece of that. So one other thing, the RAS, the RAS actually happens on Matic um, because there's no way we could do it on Ethereum. Um, I'm pretty close to an Ethereum maxi, like I love, Ethereum and I'm ready for the fork and ready for gas fees to be a thing of the past. And, I think everybody and is. I think everybody yeah, so, is. But we can't. So it is. It is. The, we will move that to main chain once once main chain is ready for it. But right now main chain's not. So we're using Matic chain, and uh, so that's where the the actual razzing takes place. So you'll use if you're on OpenSea, you'll use the bridge to Matic to do wrap fees to buy and sell those tokens. It's a little bit of a pain, but not much. I mean, it's if you've ever bought a Z horse. You, you've done it it's not it's not right. it's not hard and so just don't close the window when you're doing the bridge what's that just don't don't close the window when you're doing that bridge uh that right. bridge over yes <laughs> correct yes and so the other um another really cool thing that we developed um which i think other projects can use this i actually i filed patents on this stuff because it, it's what, what i do and a lot of times it's, it's just they end up being defensive patents 
But if anybody wants to use this until we get the Ethereum fork, they're more than welcome to just shoot me an email and I'll never bother you about it. But <laughs> the way we're doing the way we're doing the randomization on this, we um, instead of having things mint actively with a gas war, normally if anybody pre mints, everybody feels like it's not fair distribution. Um, and so what we're doing is we're pre minting, so that's a lot cheaper. And then we will, when you come and buy, we will take your timestamp from your purchase and we'll ask an Oracle on Ethereum to give us a randomized number corresponding to the tokens. We'll inbound that Oracle, that number, and, and all of the token order is hashed into the, onto the blockchain. So we know how the token, basically imagine. Oh, that's smart. Actually. That. This is crazy. Like you're, you're a genius, man. I like this. That's so <laughs> Thanks, smart, man. actually. So we, so yeah, so we had, we stack the deck, we shuffle the deck and then we hash it and we put the hash on the chain. So that's proven. And then we reach out to the Oracle, ask for uh, a number. The Oracle gives us a number for Hunter's order. We reach down. If, if, you're, if you get number 10, we reach down and pull yep. pack 10 through, through 15. If you've got five, hand them out and bam, those are yours. And you can do the exact same thing with any NFT release. And then you could basically set it up so that um, there are things you could do where people can, you know, request their spot. They get that doesn't have to be done on chain. It's just you, you could run an order. You, you could do you could do things off chain that let people set an order so you don't have to have a big gas war. And then instead of minting at the time, you use that methodology, that approach using Oracle to do the randomization. And you can really avoid a bunch of gas fees and, and things that kind of, you know, really kind of monkey us all up on these things. But it's right. It's really useful in that regard. And it gives people total trust that, you know, there's nothing we're holding back here. No, there's no sweetheart deal. I, I couldn't give you a specific RAS token if I wanted to, unless I want to break the the hash and show every break either the hash or disobey the oracle and show everybody on etherscan that i cheated so it's yeah provable, that's that's verifiable trustless well, not tr it's trustless and you know transparent yeah fully transparent and so and then at the end you'll see the hash you'll know how everything was stacked you'll see the hash was unfair and we also do the exact same thing on those thanos snap eliminations um every token will be tagged basically binary We'll reach out to the uh, Oracle. Oracle will tell us which rent, which which group to eliminate, and they eliminate. Right. And it all comes so, off the Oracle. And there's, so there's not a predetermined destiny. It's not like the winning token comes out of the pack and it's pre predestined to be the winner. That was going to ask. It is randomized. It each of those steps, it gets randomized again for. Yep. Yep. Um, this is this is as, yeah. This is as fair as anything I've. I mean, I, I challenged my engineers. I said, I have you have to give me. Um, something that that you you with full access can't cheat it, and right. and I said that's the only way we're going to build trust. And we worked on that that the randomization we worked on that, and and again once we got it, we was like this is pretty unique. We should we should patent it. And then the idea is if we ever you know with a defensive patent, if anybody if you ever infringe on somebody else, maybe they infringe on you, and nobody sues anybody. And unfortunately, that's the world we live in here. With right, I know America. So, but but it's. It is patented, but it's or patent pending, but it's not something I'm trying to stop other people from doing. If you want to do that, like I said, have at it. You don't even you don't need my permission now, but if we get the patent, just send me an email and you can do it. And maybe right. we won't need it after the we won't maybe we don't need it when gas fees are you know really really low. We won't need it. Right. No, but that's that's interesting. I, I it's interesting to see your thought process and your business plan and how you're approaching the technology as a whole. Um, with the, with the company. So that's so yeah. sick. Um, yeah. so, I mean, maybe stepping away from, from that, the overall core value here with the, the cards, what do you, what do you take of the card market right now? Um, you know, it's seen um, some amazing increases. Um, yeah. is it, is it FOMO fluffy right now, or is it, you think it's going to hold this standard going forward the next, you know, five, 10 years? So I've, I've been in the hobby for a long time and I've seen cycles where we've had big run-ups and we've had pullbacks and big run-ups and pullbacks. And it's, 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 it over my lifetime, the bait, you know, the floor has always been higher than the previous. And um, I feel like that's kind of what happened. COVID was an absolute perfect storm. The only way you could buy cars was online. Um, and a lot of people rushed in a lot of nostalgia, dad's getting back into it with their kids. And we saw some particular cards for super, superstar type players that just went absolutely parabolic. Um, I sold a significant amount of my personal collection back in February and March because the prices were just super overcooked and, uh, and I'm buying again. 
So that's kind of where I think the market is. The market is strong. I mean, we saw this morning a $4.3 million um, Patrick Mahomes sale. The, um, Brent Hugens and, and Jesse and the team over at PWCC brokered that deal. Uh, that was a huge, huge card. Um, and, and, you know, so there, there, there are those, there are those cards on the top end that are still alive and well. Now, when you get into the middle and low end cards that are overproduced, I would almost equate it to like your most common and less desirable apes, um, right. that, you know, that that's kind of what base cards are with overproduction on top of it. And it's, and the, that market is super soft. Um, it's, I, I can't say that it's, it's, I don't, it doesn't. It doesn't feel like it's. Um, I feel I, I, if if you're if that's the if it's where you're at in the market. If you like, if you want to go buy a base Luka Doncic card or a, a base Charizard out of the 2020 um, Shining Fates, um, you, I, I I don't feel like those prices are are super cooked. I think it's okay to buy there, but I don't think you're gonna. I don't think you're gonna see a huge big run up. I think they're just kind of fairly priced right now. So right. I feel like overall the market got too cooked. Um, it had a, what I believe will ultimately prove to be a healthy correction. And I think we're, we're kind of back on the way up now. We're starting to see a lot of cards that were selling down. You, you look at certain bellwether cards, there's a Topps Chrome LeBron and PSA 10. That card ran up as high as, I think they got up like 60,000 and they dropped all the way down to 14. So, I mean, we, you know, this stuff has crypto volatility in it. Maybe it yeah, wouldn't that's, maybe that's some big, significant maybe price movement. quite as high as 60. They might've got closer to 50. Maybe it was 50, not 60, but anyway, it was a lot, but that was like one sale at 14 and then it bam, right back up to 20. Like everybody's like, no, that's too cheap. Right. So, and that card before COVID, you could have picked that card up for four grand, maybe three grand. Um, so it, it's solid wow. 10 X. It's solid 10x, and then it had a big retraction, but it's still 3x if you bought it before COVID. Now, if you rushed in unaware, just like on any any NFT project, and you bought that thing back in Feb back in February or March, you got wrecked. And um, and and the guys that were around and had been around, none were buying back in February or March. Like those were new market entrants, mm -hmm. and a lot of people did overpay for some stuff. Now. Are they going to get hurt long term on, on the good stuff? Those tops, Chrome, LeBrons? I don't think they will. If they if they if they bought those with a five year window, I think they're going to be really solid. If they bought Mickey Mantles in in March, they they may have overpaid and at the you know, compared to what it is today. But I think if you hold that for five years, you're going to be fine. If you bought a mm -hmm. Jordan and paid seven hundred grand for it, I think you're fine. You just you got to hold. Um, and you you probably came in a little too hot. And you, you kind of got something maybe a little bit more than you should have paid at the time. But if you right. just, it's not a loss until you sell it. And if you hold it, I think you'll probably do well. Totally makes sense. Um, where do you think the most value in the market is right now? Like as far as like nobody's looking and maybe like you don't want to share alpha here because, you know, no, obviously no, I'm, you have I'm, people I'm, listening. I'm fine with like, I, I, I really think that um, when I look around the NFT space, one of the things that I'm still doing or you, do you mean in NFTs or you mean in cards in general? Which, which, which Let's talk both. both. I mean, we have uh, NFT listeners probably and card collectors right now listening. Um, so we'll give them a little bit of both in your opinion. Yeah, so I'll start with I'll start with the NFTs. I mean, the you know, I feel really good about some of the nice art blocks type stuff. Like I think that stuff is really good to own, like in and you know, Fidenzas and ringers and, and all those. I, I really do. I think those those are gonna be historically important you know mm -hmm. when pwcc a lot of times they'll call a card they'll call it a critically important uh piece and I, and I think some of that stuff will be that and i think we'll look back in 20 years and those things will be super relevant um and again i i can't really i, I don't try to predict where a price is going to be in six months i i know I, I don't think anybody can but i just feel like those are the good things that if you hold those and you're you have a long-term window i think you're gonna be fine i love crypto punks um, I'm, I, I, I was trying to mop the floor on those a while back until the floor really kind of jumped up here recently. Uh, I'm not currently buying, but I'm, I'm, I'm still kind of, I guess I would say why I'd like to own more. So I believe very strongly in those. And, 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 and if you move over into like the, um, the avatar projects, they're so much fun. I love the freaking things, right? They're, it's exciting, I, right? I, 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 I hope that we're going to, I hope we're not going to look back on this and think that these were pet rocks from the seventies or these were ICOs from a few years ago. I hope that's not going to happen. I don't think it will. I think there will be winners and losers. There will be winners um, and losers. Is what I was going to say. 
Yeah, but some of the projects, I mean, when you look at the communities that are around them and they, the people that have done things right, the ones that give the IP, um, so that you own your IP, you can put your ape on a shirt, you can put him on a coffee mug, you can, if, if apes get popular enough, you can license your ape to Snapple and they can put it in a commercial if, it's, if yep. it has some other significant relevance. I mean, if some, if some influencer is using their ape as their avatar, and, and Snapple comes along and wants to hire them as a, uh, a paid endorser and they voice over a cartoon and pop, they can pop their ape in. And, and that's, it's theirs, they own it. And, and, and those type of things are super cool. I really love that because, um, and, and, and so what I'm doing in that space is I'm, I am trying to sprinkle around, if I like the art, I, if I like the art, and I think the art is good. That's my first test. Um, I actually put that even a little bit ahead of the team test, which normally I would never do that in business. But I feel like if you get a good team and the art is just complete dog crap, it just can't, it won't hold. Yep. Um, so if the, if the project looks good visually, and then I look behind it to see what the team's doing, what their vision looks like, um, then generally I, I mint and, and get in. And if I, if I, if, if I can't get in at mint, I'll, I'll pick some up um, kind of right after mint. And I like to kind of spread that around. And so if you told me today to pick some winners out of that space, CryptoPunks for sure would be my number one. I think they're going to be the, the, the bellwether for the whole thing. Um, and I, I really do like where the apes are. Um, I'm not, I haven't sold a single ape. I did sell my dog. I wish I had I not them. sold any. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I sold my dogs, but I still have my apes. And then um, I, you know, most every project, I'm, 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 most every project that's got, say, a floor above 0.2, I'm, I'm in it. Um, oh wow yeah so i'm 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 in most of them and and generally you know you're talking five to a, a dozen and some of the homage products i i do because it's, it's just you never know and i learned this in cards a lot of times you just never know what what's going to pop off and it's kind of like venture investing if you, you only need one winner if it's a real winner you only need one winner to offset 10 losses i mean you look at the apes i mean if you got those things right after mint right now and i mean where are we right now I don't know. Is it a, is about a five to six ETH floor on them, or it's probably higher? Oh, no, Maybe it's six six point five ETH right now. Yeah, so that's um, you know, that's a great part. That's 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 amazing. And so, and I've I've won on that, and I'm putting some of that to. And it's there. You don't win until you sell it. And I'm I learned I know that for sure from cards. Now moving over to cards. If if I were walking into this show today and I was going to spend my my own money, um, the 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 number one thing that I would personally go after are um, big low print production Kobe autographs. Um, we saw a correction in the market that I feel pulled Kobe down too much. I think his long-term um, significance uh, relevance is, is really high. Um, his stuff is down and it's down. I just, it just feels when I, when I see some of the Kobe prices, it feels a little bit uncomfortably underpriced to me. Mm. And I think some of the, some of the other. Um, Where are we sitting early- price-wise with those right now? Well, it just, it depends. Like, so if you, if you, if you look at his, his base rookie card is the 1996 tops Chrome. And if you look at that, not tops Chrome, just 1996 tops. If you look at that card, that card ran up as high as like 8,000. And it's now you could get, you could get them out there on the show floor for probably 2,400. Um, okay. And so pretty big decline The pop on those. I want to say is around there's, I think there's about 6,000 of them. Don't quote me on that. I, I, I could be wrong, but, that, but it's, it's relatively low pop compared to something like Luka Doncic, a modern player where he's got in that PSA 10 grade, the population of his is close to 20,000. And so the Kobe stuff, even, even his high pop stuff is low when you compare it to the more modern stuff. And then if you right. move over in his autographs, there's a lot of them, but his, exqu- his early exquisite autographs, when I look at a patch for someone like Luka Doncic, who I love Luka, I own some good Luka cards. Um, but if you look at Luka and then you look back over to Kobe and it's like this more rare Kobe is a lot cheaper than this, this Luka. It just doesn't make sense. It doesn't pass. Yeah. The test I, I, so I, I feel there. like Kobe. And, and then I, I love, love, double love Pokemon. Um, <laughs> I am absolutely buying Pokemon for a 20 year hold. Um, I believe that they're the people that, uh, you know, it came out in 1999 here in the United States, 95 with Top Sun in Japan. Um, and the, other than the first edition Charizard, which is in PSA 10 is about a $350,000 card and a few of the really obscure trainers. Um, none of that stuff is anywhere near the level 
of where sports cards are for similar rarity, some right. of that early Pokemon stuff. Yeah, and like that, the Mewtwo's and like coming. They're like I'm, I'm looking at those and I'm like they just aren't like there seems like there's one or two, three like holy grails, and then the rest of the market just doesn't fit into that kind of function that we see on that price. It's, 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 it's because the people with money look like me, not you, in that show right now. They they didn't gotcha. they don't know what Pokemon is. Like that generation, when they get their buying power, there is no reason in the world for me that PSA ten red cheek, yellow cheek Pikachu's won't shoot the freaking moon. I mean, he's the mascot of the whole daggum thing. Exactly. And and so those to me feel in a in 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 a long term window now, it, but you, when you're buying those you understand that the people that are going to really create that market are still 10 to 15 years away from acquiring their wealth i mean their folks have to kind of well, get unless they're in crypto have, they're they're yeah, you know, know they're in it <laughs> pokemon, right? yeah so but no I, so I, I love the pokemon stuff um i really i i'm trying to educate myself on comics um i comics did not have the run-up that other collectibles had during covid um, and I really, so like you're on beanie some- strain right now. Beanie's got the same strategy. Yep. So I, I'm, yeah. And so like, I would, I mean, I'm, I'm in on, I'm in on the, the, the punks comic deal with, with pixel vault and stuff too. And, but also just overall physical comics, especially some of the ones that are, that I look at the early black Panther stuff. Right. And, um, and then you look at Chadwick Bozeman and what he did in mm. that role and how I feel like he transcended that character and brought it into a level of um, pop culture awareness for us that is just unbelievable. And, 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 and so he, he, I think now is just tied to that role. And so when I look at like first appearance of Black Panther comics, those to me are are a huge, huge buy. And I do actually have some of those. It's the one that I started with. And so I was like, this, this is the one I'm going to go get because I, I, he was one of my favorite actors. I loved him in 42 and loved him in the, in the Panther movies. And um, so I went, went hard after those and I went hard after some of the Black Panther cards. Again, it's not Chadwick on it. It's, it's, it's the character. It's the reference so, of, of Black Panther. And, you yeah, know, it holds yeah. significant cultural relevance today. Like that, from where we went when that first appearance happened to today. And it's, it'll be something we look back on and we're like, that was like the first appearance of Batman where yep. every kid in America references B- Batman and Superman. Um, yep. I can see that happening and playing out, especially as, you know, the culture in America changes. Yeah, for sure. And outside of that, if you want to gamble and play something shorter term, just go over to the show and buy, um, buy the, the quarterbacks that, of the teams that you think are gonna are, are gonna are gonna do well this year. I mean, if you think Josh, if you think that uh, Josh Allen's gonna have a great year and take his team, then go buy Josh Allen cards. It, right. It's a Lamar. It's a Lamar years. Jackson year. I just want to put that out there uh, in the universe. There, it yeah. is a Lamar Jackson. Lamar year. stuff. Lamar stuff is actually a bargain right now overall. So he, if if he came yeah. out and had like an MVP type year, his cards or something. If 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 he had an MVP year, his typical cards have a really good chance to three X. Um, oh, wow. So because he, his prices are down a good bit and, and he is an electrifying player when he's on and he's, and he's healthy and he's doing what he does. He's electrifying. And so right. he's a guy that had huge upside, but if they come out and lay an egg, um, you know, so, yeah, but you I'm may sure. not get hurt as bad on those because yeah, the prices are lower, but yeah, but no, he, he would be a good one to go after. So. Very cool. Very cool. Um, well, man, I've, I've really enjoyed talking to you. This has yeah, it's uh, been great made me very very excited about what you're about to do um it's definitely you probably have lightened my wallet a little bit uh throughout this talk on on stuff i want to purchase as well as uh get involved in your project because it does seem uh it seems like it's going to be a success to me and you definitely have the uh history to back up uh what you're launching here um i know you have a, a busy conference and stuff to to you know deal with and we've been on here for a while um, so I'll, we can wrap things up. Um, you know, before we head out, I have a couple questions for you uh, that just you know help. Uh, I think the general listener, um, you know, what is what is something in your your journey, maybe in collectibles and NFTs, that you wish you knew when you started that a beginner should you know uh, take to heart and, and deploy in their strategies. Um, one of the big things that I wish that I had known is to have a little bit better vision and collectibles of envisioning what other people will want versus what I will want. 100%. And if, if you want to make money from it and a lot of times people, I, I hear people say, collect what you want. 
collect what you want. And that's fine if, you're, if your goal is to just hold it forever and you, and you don't want to feel like, oh, shit, I got crushed on price and now I'm depressed. But if, uh, that most people that are coming into this stuff, they're coming into it with the idea that they want to have a good return. And I, I approached collecting when I was younger exactly through that way. I bought what I wanted and I bought a lot of stuff that I really liked and it never value mm -hmm. never got there. Um, when I realized that I needed to buy for a, I needed to buy today for a buyer in however long my window is, whether it be a six month window or a 20 year window, I'm buying today, not because I don't know anything about Pokemon, nothing. And, and I don't really love Pokemon art. I mean, it's just, it's not something I grew up with. I'm 46 year old dude. Right. I'm buying Pokemon because your generation is going to want it in right. 20 years. So um, so that, that would be kind of my, I think my single biggest thing where I think I hear people give advice that I'm a little bit go the other way. It just depends on what your goal is. If your goal is something that you just want to hold forever, then yeah, get what you want. But if it's right. not, and you're really trying to hit a lick, buy what other people want. Totally will agree. Predict totally what agree. It, and the more you can predict it, the better you're going to do. hundred um, percent. Yeah. Next question for you is what is, what is the last NFT you purchased and what is the last card you purchased? I think uh, we'll, we'll go with the double, double there. Um, so the last NFT I purchased um, would have been, I was actually gobbling up uh, the four on a few deadheads the other day. So that would probably have been the most recent one. So, I mean, I, I, uh, I like where their project, I like the art. I like how it looks. I like the animated series vision. I think it's super cheap. Um, I was in on it well before Gary went in and crushed the discord and blew everything up <laughs> on that. Uh, and the only thing I think they missed on that one, I, I like things where they, the, 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 the six, six, six on the shirts, I think, unfortunately will alienate some folks and mm. hurt the animated series. Um, and, and it doesn't matter if you're like, for, forget where you are in religion. It's just something like, I, I don't want to alienate 40% of the population who may be, you know, so I, so that was my only reservation with them. I think they made a miss on that one little thing in their art. Yeah, I wish they hadn't done that. But the rest of because because the characters are lovable, right? They're not. They are. They're cute. I, they're, I, they're, I can see them as plushies, animated series, yeah. kids back. Like yeah. they're cool. I, yeah, and I can see them aren't. building a brand around it. Yeah, but but most soccer moms aren't going to buy their kid a plushie with six 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 across his chest. You know. So yeah, it's, I don't think they, so. They, they they missed they missed on that one. I think, but I, I still there's enough of them. There's ten thousand of them. So I'm still I'm still in on the project. Um, so that would have been the last NFTs. And then the last card I bought, um, about an hour ago, I bought a, um, 1996 Topps Chrome Kobe refractor, uh, PSA 10. It's probably one of the nicest 10 copies in existence. Wow. And, and it's going to be in our, in our contract, it's going to be the eight. The eight Jordan yeah, we referenced that earlier. Yep. Very and cool. so that's the last card I bought. And I just bought it a few hours ago. And then it, I'll, I'll be showing that card. And one of the things that happens with those Kobe cards, the refractors, they turn green from some type of oxidation that happens. For, for, I, I, as I understand it, it's from fluorescent light and humidity. So there's 60, 62 copies, I think, of the, the refractor in PSA 10. So 62 in the world. I would say that of those, probably 10 of them are not green. And of the ones that are not green, probably only three of them are centered, like really well centered. When you look at it visually, it doesn't look like the card is off to one off. side or the other. Right. Um, ours is not green and it's dead nut centered. It's one of the nicest ones in existence. And it's going to be the, the reward fracks for drop two. So, and it's going to follow a similar pattern to the Jordan. Um, I'm going to set the floor price, not the floor price, the cap price at the same because those cards in real life have kind of traded spots. They, they sell around the same amount. So right. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to slap the same 99 years and the same 20,000 ETH exit price on that, because it's, I think that that one, it's the, it's, it's not the first card, but it's the first major Kobe in the smart contract that kind of defined the standards, just like crypto punk number 50 is relevant, even if it's you know not the first. And I think that our contract, because we were the first here, the first to do it, the Genesis Jordan, you know, leading the way, we're coming behind that. This is the eight. The seven is going to be Mickey Mantle. The right. 12 is going to be Tom Brady. Um, Tiger Woods, I'm going to put him at, um, right now I've got him earmarked for the 92 because that's which is his rookie year. He doesn't wear a number. Charizard is going to be the six because that's what he is in the Pokedex. 
Um, so, you know, oh, these, very cool. So, Smart. Yeah. So you'll be able to get pieces of all of these amazing cards. I mean, I'm, I'm actually, I was telling someone earlier today, I'm going to transition my own personal collection over the next 12 months. I'm going to sell every physical card I have. Um, and I'm going to move to basically make my collection nothing but um, vault tokens. And I want to, I want to start over. I want to buy vault tokens from other people um, versus vaulting my own versus doing my own cards. So I'm just going to probably, I'm either going to roll my cards into drops or I'm just going to sell them. And then I'm going to, I'm going to participate in the block packs market. And so the Frax tokens are going to be a big piece of my collection. I want one of every, uh, every card we do across these Jersey numbers. I want one of the eight. I want, and, and, and because they're in tiers, if you're, you can collect the, the 199 for every one, if that's your level, right? If you're and and what will those sell at? I don't know. Um, the bronze, which is there's 2,999 of them. Guys in the Discord have been floating around numbers in the in the in the point one ETH range, so that would be 200 bucks, 220 bucks. Right. Um, you know that's a level where a lot of people can play. So you could get a bronze um, of the Genesis. You can get a bronze of the eight. You can get a bronze of the seven, and you could basically make that uh, your own collecting strategy. And now as these things. You know, and, and, it's, and, and it's just a matter of how popular they get and what do people want to own. And it's 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 similar to owning a card out of a, a tops box or a panini box. It's 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 it gives you it gives you a piece of something that you can really I think have a cool attachment to. And then we're going to bring the the plan is to bring a whole lot of armed security and bring all the cards to major shows and let people come up and see the pieces see the cards they own pieces of take pictures with them and that's what people have been doing today they've been stopping by the booth everybody's wanting to take a picture with the genesis um the kobe i just stuck it in there i actually that, i just broke that news on your podcast and nobody else uh, nobody else i mean people knew kobe was coming for the eight, right but, but nobody knew what card it was right so now now you know if you've listened yeah. through this far in the, the episode or at least to that point in the episode uh congrats uh, you know yeah. Um, well, that's so cool. The last question that we'll close things out. Where do you see the NFT collectible space in three to five years? Um, I love it, man. I really love it. I think that, um, I think that we are, we're, we're so early. I mean, it's so, I mean, onboarding is a big deal. And I think that's one of the big things that our project I'm hoping can really help with. Um, and we, we've got to onboard more people. Um, you know, I saw the other day and you may have, I may have seen me in some of the tweets, like, you know, there are a lot of people that are just shitting all over the stoner cats thing. And I like, I'm, I'm not going to tell, I I would, it's, I'm not, I'm not here to defend, you know, Ashton Kutcher's project, but at the same time, I just love the fact that I, I do think he has, I don't think this is a cash grab for him. I'm not sure that it's the best project in the world but i'm not i don't think he's cash grabbing i think he's trying i think he wants to do it well and um and i hope he'll onboard a ton of people that's I what think i he did i think a lot of people i had no idea what this was it came across their their screens at some point and they're like what the hell is ashton doing and now yeah. they know what nfts are just because they took you know five minutes to read about it yeah. And then once they and once they see the animated series and, and then, oh, I want to own one of these, it could it could be, it could be a great onboarding thing for us. And um, and then and we'll see where where his project goes um, in, in particular. But I think we just we just need big onboarding events. I mean, God, imagine if Top Shot was ERC 721. Imagine where we'd be today. I mean, there's be a crazy. ton of things, ton things of be crazy that have Top Shot. Look at those Top Shot wallets. And a lot of those aren't they're not buying the same stuff me and you were buying. They're not, right. they're not. No, and it's, so, it's a different ecosystem. Yeah. And so I love, um, I tell people, I, 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 it really, it bothers me when I hear people and I'm look, I don't, I don't know Gary V personally. Um, I, I respect him from a distance and, but it bothers me when people like bring negativity to his project. I'm like, you owe him a debt of gratitude. That dude made you so much freaking money by, promoting that space yep. and, and and he's just kind of getting started his his footprint is enormous um you know it's just his reach is enormous and so we need more people like that and 100%. um and i you know i i don't have that megaphone um i have ad dollars i can spend and i'm spending the heck out of them and i'm, I'm doing things to push people to the space and on board but there's people that have way more capability for that than me that can do it with a tweet or with a with a with a with a an Instagram post. And, and I just hope that we can um, welcome those people in and, and they're going to want to participate in this space and do it the right way. I mean, some of these early celebrity drops were just 
not, and I'm again, I'm not talking stoner cast, stoner cast way, but I mean, some of the stuff where it was just a picture of the guy or whatever. And I saw people buying those and I'm just like, Oh yeah. my God, you're, you're going to get so wrecked here. <laughs> um, and, but, but we, I think we're starting to see some blueprints on how to do them better and be creative with the technology. And I think totally. so for to back to your original question, where do I see it in three to four years? I, I, I think we're going to be really, really good. I, um, I think we're going to have some of these projects that are going to be the winners. I think we're going to be really happy with where they are. I think, I think they're going to, I think NFTs as a whole, I like having my money in the NFTs more than I like having it in the ETH. Like I, mm, really? I, I feel like it gives, it gives me good exposure to the ETH, but at the same time, it it's a hedge me, bet. Yes, or a leverage bet, excuse I, and, me. Yeah. And I, and I just, I really like being tied to these, to the collectibles and to the, it's just, it's just where I like to have it. So my, um, my NFT bag is a whole lot bigger than my, my ether bag. Oh, wow. Awesome. I love it. I love it. Well, well thanks for having me on Hunter. I really, ET. yeah, it was a uh, um, Frenchie. You're doing great show. I, Frenchie. I, I, your, it was a your pleasure. Show keeps, no, your show keeps me in the loop, man. Like I <laughs> can't keep up with everything. Like you are, I got too much going on. So I'll pop the headphones in when I'm, you know, doing a run or something I listen to and I, I get all my floor prices. And I'm like, and if you don't do it, I'm like, oh, hell, where's Hunter? He didn't do a post day. I don't know what the hell. I know. When I, don't know I, where the I get is. the DMs I get if I miss a show are hilarious where people are like, you better be a, a family emergency or you got stranded in the middle of a, a highway. I, where's the show? Um, so it's cool hearing these right. things like people driving yeah. to work and listening it means a lot. Um, yeah. Well, everybody, yeah. thank you so much for listening. Uh, Frenchie can be found on Twitter at ETH. Uh, Frenchie or uh, go check out block packs uh, online. I'll link everything below. Um, definitely give him some love and a follow and follow along. Uh, if you're not going to buy, just listen to the man. He's a wealth of knowledge. Um, and we'll get, catch you guys on the next one. Thank you so much for listening.